Hello, this is Paul Hoyt. Welcome to today's Office Hours presentation. Our Office Hours presentation is a relaxed, informal mentoring program that I held, hold every Monday at noon Pacific time. This recording is going to be available online for a few days in the Office Hours page, and then all recordings will be archived in our members area. This is Office Hours recording number 43, so there are 42 other recordings that you may have a chance to listen to and go back to and review from time to time. The reasons I do this is because being a successful business owner can be a great experience, but I know that it's tough. You really need the education, training, and the tools and the team in order to be successful, and I love to offer you that kind of support. And I want you to get to know me because when you get to know me, you'll know that I really do care. I really do want you to succeed. I really do want you to live an abundant and joyful life, and I'm eager to do my part to help you make that happen. Um, the agenda for our calls is always an in-depth discussion of a business success principle. Then we have some closing remarks, some special offers, and an invitation for next week's session. And then we open it up for questions and answers. First questions and, and, and comments with regards to today's subject matter. And then we'll open it up for anything related to business or, frankly, anything that you want to talk about. During the course of today's call, I invite you to join us in the Facebook Brilliant Business Group. There's the URL on your, on your screen. It's just facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash brilliant business where you can make comments, ask questions, and share insights and takeaways that you get from the calls, not just during the call, but throughout the week. So if you have a call or you have a particular question about business that you could use a little support with or a little brainstorming with, go to the Brilliant Business Group and post the question because we're all eager to help you and all eager to support you in the ways that we can. I also invite you, if you haven't done all so already, to like my business page on Facebook. We're up to 350 some likes, which I'm very excited about. You know, of course, our, so our next goal is 500 likes and then 1,000 likes, and I'm excited about our social media success there. Today's topic is on improving your sales performance. It's the best way to get money into your business right away. You know, I did an office hour session, um, I think it was the third one I did, entitled What to Do When You Have No Money, and the bottom line is that I recommend that you sell something. And so today we're going to talk about improving your sales performance so that you can be a little more successful selling tomorrow than you were yesterday. I always try to relate the subject matter of my office hours presentations to one or more of the key performance areas. And of course, today on improving sales performance, it's all about sales, <clears throat> the key performance area of sales. And in today's call on the agenda, we're going to talk about improving your sales mindset, improving your sales processes, uh, planning your work and working your plan, getting continuous support, and then I'll sum it all up with the bottom line. First, I want to talk a little bit about my background in sales and in sales in general. So sales is one of the top three key performance areas. There was some logic to the way in which I present these key performance areas with leadership at the bottom and then sales and service and delivery at the next level. The bottom line is that you can be really good at marketing and product development and operations and administration and financial management and you can be good at service and delivery, but if you are not good at sales, if you fail to be successful in sales in your business, your entire business will crumble. It doesn't make any difference how good you are at marketing. It doesn't make any difference how good you are at keeping the books and paying the taxes. It just flat doesn't make any difference at all. If you can't sell and if you can't deliver a valuable product, then you're just not going to be successful in business. I say that sales is the, is the second most important key performance area, only second to leadership because leadership is where, you, is where you decide for yourself how successful you're going to be in sales and how you're going to do with all the other key performance areas. So it's definitely one of the top three KPAs. I've had a fair amount of experience in sales in my life, and I've got to be frank with you, sales has been challenging to me. When I first started selling, it was with door-to-door -door sales way back in college. I had a couple of different summer jobs, and I went door-to-door -door knocking on doors and giving a rehearsed speech and a script and selling things door-to-door. -door. It was great experience. Um, we, learned, uh, we learned a lot of things, not the least of which was how to dodge the policeman 
um, who are after people who are in violation of the Green River Ordinance. Our bosses said, we don't care, just go knock on the doors, and if you get in trouble, we'll come bail you out. Well, fortunately, they never had to bail me out, but there wasn't a, an afternoon or two where I had an opportunity to uh, take a break, so to speak, because we couldn't actually sell in the area in which they had dropped us off. I did sales again with my first business, which was from 1980 through 1985. And then after I stopped working, well, after I stopped working as a CIO for a manufacturing company from 85 through 90, I went specifically back into corporate America to gain the experience that I knew that I needed in sales and marketing. And for the next several years, I worked with over a hundred sales professionals and on many, many different sales teams. So I've had a fair amount of experience when it comes to sales. I've also studied a lot of different sales systems out there. The systems that I have studied include systems like strategic selling, uh, consultative selling, targeted account selling, reverse selling, solution selling, spin selling, and most recently Eric Lawholm's protege selling system. So there are a lot of different systems out there. And I have been studying sales for a long time, frankly, because when I started, I wasn't very good at it. I have an engineer's mindset, or at least that was my natural mindset, an engineer's, accountant's, computer programmer's, analyst kind of mindset. And it was difficult for me to shift from an analyst mindset or a computer programmer mindset to a sales mindset. But I'm happy to say that over the years of studying all of these different systems, I, I think I could become a pretty good salesperson. And I talk about sales in my program Beyond Business Survival, and I'll just review that to you real quickly. But the four business success principles I talk about there are number one, enjoy selling. Number two, make quota. Number three, implement systems. And number four, to be a consummate sales professional. I'm not going to repeat that content today. I've got some new content for you, but I encourage you to review those those sales principles, those business success principles in the Beyond Business Survival program if you haven't listened to that recently. Today we're going to talk about several different things and we're going to start about improving your sales mindset. That's the first thing on our agenda. I think that with sales mindset that you really have to get to the place where you love to sell. You have to get to the place where you're eager to have those conversations with people about how you can help them move forward in their business or move forward in their life or get the things that they really want. And in order to have a very positive attitude towards sales, it's real important that you surround yourself with positive people and positive messages. Because in sales, we get rejection a lot. We get people that say, no thanks. We get people to give us you know, very good objections or people who say, hey, I already bought, you know, we're getting turned down a lot. So it's important for you to rem to continually remind yourself of the great principles that you have in sales and to surround yourself with those positive messages so that you can remember the greatness that you have within, the divine presence that you have within, and the tremendous potential you have to be successful. And just remember that, hey, that next call could be the call that gives you to thousands of dollars in your own checking account. Uh, and it takes reminders to do that. One of the best things that you can do to improve your sales mindset is to focus on the value that you're bringing to others. And there's several different ways in which you can bring value to others with your products and services. One of them is safety. You can help them reduce their stress. You can help them feel safer in their jobs, in their lives, in some way. And people are looking to do that all, at, all the time. People love peace of mind and, and a, a feeling of being, you know, belonging and being, being safe in their lives. So that's one of the ways in which you can help people is to help increase their sense of safety. Another way that you can help people is to help them be more comfortable. You can sell them things that they really enjoy doing or, or foods that they enjoy eating or candy they enjoy, they enjoy taking. So you can help them feel comfortable in many ways. Another way is to help them with their self-esteem, help them with their self-image. When we sell things like fashion and new cars and houses even and clothes, I mean, it, it's not just about helping them, you know, have something good to eat. It's not just about having them good transportation to get them from place to place. 
It's about helping them with their self-image and their self-esteem. And we can also focus in on helping people achieve their dreams. That's one of my favorites, by the way, because I get the opportunity every day to help business owners achieve their dreams. And when I think about what I do from that, from that perspective, it's very easy for me to pick up the phone and have a conversation. It's easy for me to do an office hours presentation or to send an email to somebody because I know that I'm helping people achieve their dreams, and that really helps me focus on the value that I'm bringing to others. Another thing that you can do to improve your sales mindset is to practice shifting your mindset and getting into the zone. You know, we all have this zone. We all have the ability to have a very, very good attitude, to be on our game. And, and finding ways to shift into that zone can be very important for you. For some people, that's a piece of music. For some people, it's doing a little exercise. Tony Robbins teaches people to have their power moves to help you shift into that zone where you are just on your game and you are on fire and you've got that joyful warrior energy just flowing out of you. You can find ways to do that. I'm a big believer in your ability to shift your mindset. In fact, I've written books on that, my two latest inspirational works, The Practice of Awakening and The Practice of Awakening to the First Light of Joy are all about the, the hundreds of ways, hundreds of ways that I have found to shift my energy, to shift my mindset, to get back into that state where I love to be when I'm at, when I'm at my very best. So to improve your sales mindset, I strongly encourage you to find the ways that work for you, the music that works for you, the dance that works for you, the inspirational messages that work for you, just the things that work for you to help you get back into that place where you just love to sell and you can't wait to have a conversation with other people. In fact, one of my favorite things to say is that if you have any hesitation or resistance at all in sales, is because you don't have enough confidence in the value that you're bringing to other people. So be thinking about that. Shift back into that that positive energy, joyful warrior mindset. And being successful in sales is a lot about the inner game, and it's a lot about personal growth. I think even more so than any other key performance area that we have, sales is the key performance area where any sort of stress or tension or reluctance or hesitation or resistance that you have, any sense of lack of confidence that you have will expose itself in the area of sales. So. Again, to improve your sales mindset, get to the place where you love to sell, surround yourself with positive people, focus on the value that you're bringing to other people, practice shifting your mindset and getting into the zone, and focus on personal growth in your business, personal growth in your life. The second area I want to talk about is improving your sales process. Now that you have your heart in the right place, let's get your head in the right place too. And that's about doing things that can help you increase your productivity and your efficiency in sales. First, I want to talk about the sales cycle because most of the things that we do with regards to improving your sales process start with the conversation about the sales cycle that you go through. And with every sales approach, there's a sales cycle, and there are a lot of different types of sales cycles, most of which I've had experience with. Um, there is a very, very short sales cycle, which is an impulse sales event, which may be like a 10-second sales call. You know, hey, mister, um, would you like to buy some cookies is a, is a famous Girl Scout 10-second sales call. Hey, would you like, or how many boxes of cookies would you like to buy today? You know, it's a, immediately asking for the order, and it's a very, very quick impulse sales approach. Uh, one of my partners and clients from earlier days bought a, wrote a book on impulse sailing, selling because he was very good at that. Um, and, and I certainly recommend that if your opportunity is one of closing a deal in a matter of seconds, that you focus on the principles that he had in his book called Impulse Selling. Next to that and close to that is the one called Close. The one called Close says that we're only going to talk for a little while, and at the end of this conversation, I'm going to invite you to have an enrollment uh, opportunity with me or invite you to do, invite us to do business with each other. So there are many things in which you have a one call close 
to where it's not efficient for us to come back time and time and time again, we're going to have a conversation, and at the end of that conversation, I'm going to invite us to do business with each other or invite you to do business with me, and that's it. We don't expect to have a tremendous amount of follow-up after that. But there are other sales opportunities where the sales cycle is much longer than that, where you may have multiple meetings, where you may be selling to a group or a committee of folks, and you can have a very long, complex sales cycle. When I was selling uh, enterprise-level software, in the early 1990s, it was not at all uncommon for us to have a six to a nine month sales process. And in some cases, it might even be multiple years, 18 to 24 months of a sales process where you have 15 very focused and interested people on the selection committee or the evaluation committee. And essentially, you needed to sell to each one of them individually and to them as a group as well. So. Understanding your sales cycle is the key to understanding how you can improve your sales process. And with every sales cycle, there are stages to selling. And I'm going to go through some of the stages that you might see in your sales activity. There's lead generation is usually the first stage. And then we build the relationship. Building a relationship of trust and rapport is very helpful. Then we qualify the prospect, which is also known as your needs assessment, of asking good questions so that you can understand what your client is really looking for, what value they're looking for. Are they looking for the opportunity to uh, reduce their fear and they're looking for safety? Are they looking for an opportunity to feel more comfortable? Are they looking for an opportunity to enhance their self-image or self-esteem? And exactly what features are they looking for in products like yours or services like yours that will help them achieve the results that they are looking for, that will help them accomplish what they want to accomplish. Once you're pretty confident that you've properly qualified uh, your sales prospect, then it's about developing the opportunity and explaining things and sharing things. And then it's about making a proposal to them, a proposal to do business together, making an offer, and asking for the order so that you can reach agreement. Then after reaching the agreement, a very, very important thing is what I call the post-sales service and support. Because one of the things that we want to make sure is that we increase the lifetime value of the customer. Because it costs a lot more to get a customer for the first time than it does to follow up with customers and get them to buy additional products and services from you. So these are the typical stages that I see in a sales process. Lead generation, building the relationship, qualifying the prospect, developing the opportunity, making proposal and asking for the order, reaching agreement, and then post-sales service and support. When you think about in improving your sales process, it's about improving each one of these stages individually. It's about improving your lead generation activities. It's about improving the way in which you build relationships with your prospects and clients. It's about improving the way in which you qualify your prospects and do the needs assessment and so on. Improving the way that you make your proposals and ask for the order. And at every step in the sales process, you can have a different script or a different system. So we have appointment setting scripts or appointment setting systems. We have qualification scripts and systems that help us determine the needs. We have uh, scripts for making the proposal and asking for the order or systems that make that happen. We ask for the order with great scripts and or systems to do that. And we have scripts or systems for handling objections and for following up. Today, we're starting to see more and more what I call automated sales systems. So it's possible, for example, to come to a website, to hit a landing page, to see a video, to see the description of the products and services and the value that they can bring to, to a person, and for that person to sign up and place an order with you without you ever having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. That's an ideal automated sales system. And it may be just right for you to have an automated sales system in your particular company. But my experience is, and most information marketers and other people's experience is, that that only works 
with small orders. It's rare that somebody will come to your site and sign up for something that's $5,000, $10,000, $50,000 or more without having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, without going through the steps of building rapport and trust and going through those other steps that we talked about in the stages of selling or the steps in the selling process. So one-on-one -on -one sales, I think, is extremely important even in this day of automated sales systems. So in some cases, we automate our, our sales processes, we improve our sales processes, and in other cases, we just improve the conversations that we're having with people by improving the scripts, by improving the questions that we ask them along the way. So we have scripts at every stage. And th these are the three things that you can do to improve your sales processes. You can understand the sales cycle and begin to do staged selling. You can understand what the different stages of selling are in your particular business and whether you just have a one call close or whether it's an impulse sale or whether it's you know a very complex sales cycle over a period of months or even years. Understanding what those steps are and keeping track of them is very important. And having scripts or automated systems at every stage is an important way to improve your sales results by improving your sales processes. Once you've focused on improving your sales mindset and once you've focused on improving your sales processes, then it's time to focus on planning your work and working your plan. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the job gets done. I want you to become very goal driven and focused because before you can plan to do your work, I want you to have a vision for what it is that you want to accomplish. I want you to understand what your goals are and focus on those goals. And there are different types of goals. You can have activity goals. You can have pipeline goals. You can have revenue goals. And in some cases, I've seen companies have product or product line goals. So for example, uh, I may have a revenue goal of $20,000 a month services, but I want to have 10,000 of them that are, that are this type of service and 5,000 that are this type of service and 3,000 that are some other type of service because it's healthy for your company to have a balanced portfolio of clients and a balanced portfolio of services that you are providing. So in addition to just revenue goals or pipeline goals or activity goals, you might have actual product line goals. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what those activity goals might be. Um, the activity goals might be things like how many calls that you're going to make or how many meetings that you're going to have. Pipeline goals might be how many people that you have in your pipeline and the value of the pipeline. Um, and the, of course the revenue goals might be the actual revenue in the door. Um, once you have decided what your goals is, then we want to create your plan and then work your plan. Creating your plan is about analyzing and managing your pipeline uh, first so that you understand what your starting point is. And I did an entire Office Hours presentation on that, by the way, Office Hours 16. So if you have a good pipeline and you want to have some tips and techniques about managing that pipeline, I invite you to go back and listen to Office Hours 16, where we dedicated an entire hour to talk about uh, concepts and tools and techniques that you could use for managing your own pipeline. And then once you have done that, set aside time for those calls. Set aside time to make your meetings. Set aside time for creating your proposals, for engaging with people via email and social media, and set aside time for training and education so that you can sharpen the saw. And this is all about the plan that you put in place. I often say that one of the keys to being productive is to develop the habit of creating and keeping great appointments with yourself. And this is where you can be most effective in sales as well is creating a plan to spend a certain number of hours every day on each one of the different types of sales activities, on the email and social media activities, in face-to-face -face meeting or group meetings or online meetings with people, and on the phone with people to make those calls. Once you have created the plan, then of course it's an opportunity to work your plan. And this is where your focus and your diligence and your discipline comes into play. If you find yourself having difficulty being focused, if you find yourself having difficulty executing the plan that you have created, then it's really important for you to get a sales support team in place. Get yourself a sales success coach in place 
Because if you're not getting the results that you need to be getting in your business, if you're not making quota, if you're not surviving, or if you're all just surviving and you're not getting beyond that, if you continue to struggle and you have made the decision not to get a sales success coach, bottom line is you're choosing to fail or you're choosing to struggle. And I don't want you to make that choice. I want you to make the choice to have a much better time, a much easier time when it comes to sales. So get yourself a sales success coach and have regular meetings with that coach in order to work your plan. Once that you have made your plan and you're working your plan, then I encourage you to get continuous support over time. Continuous support means that if you're not improving with your sales techniques, if you're not improving with your sales uh, skill set, then you're probably declining in that skill set. Staying in the game helps you keep your mindset, helps you keep, keep your, your razor honed sharp, and it's all about practice, 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 practice selling. Practice selling every day. It's really important to do that. It's, it's easier to sell every, uh, every day than it is to sell every other day. It's easier to make 100 calls than it is just to make 10 calls because with practice, your confidence increases. With practice, your skill set increases. Talk to other people on your, on your support teams and ask them what's working for them. How do they get appointments? How do they qualify their prospects? How do they ask for the order? And continue to enhance your own skill set. Study, study sales success from a lot of different sources, as I have done. I gave you a list at the earlier part of the call. And I think that's one of the keys to me being as good as I am in sales, is that I continue to study sales and I continue to study it from a lot of different sources all there. And remember the ABI, always be improving. One of the favorite uh, expressions that I've seen in sales over time is ABC, always be closing. Uh, you're always closing for something. You always have a, an objective and something you're reaching for. Well, here's another one favorite of mine too. It's always be improving. Very similar to what we see in manufacturing companies about continuous process improvement. Well, in sales, you can continually improve your results or improve your skill set, your mindset when it comes to sales and do that, doing that. So here's the bottom line. If you don't sell, you don't survive. We talked about that earlier, especially if you're the only one at your company, if you're the person at your company that's responsible for selling, if you don't sell, you don't survive. If you don't have success in the key performance area of sales, your entire business will fall apart. That's the bottom line. You have to sell in order to survive. And what you do in marketing and product development and operations and financial management and also what you do in service and delivery and no matter how good you think you are as a leader at your company, if you don't sell, your business doesn't survive. Bottom line is that there's a lot of things that you can do to improve your sales performance. A lot of things that you can do to improve your mindset, to improve your sales processes to improve the way in which you are planning your work and actually executing your work and doing your work. You can, through focus on sales, dramatically improve your sales results. One of the things that you can do to do that is to get a sales success coach. I think that's the key. As I said earlier, if you're struggling in sales, if you're not getting the results that you really need in sales, and you're not getting a sales coach, and you're not getting the training that you need, and you're not keeping in the conversation and keeping in the game, then you are choosing to fail. You are choosing to struggle, and I don't want to see you to have, make that choice. I want to see you make the choice to improve your sales results so that you'll struggle less in your business. So that's been our agenda for today. We talked about the importance of improving your sales mindset, improving your sales processes, of planning your work and then working your plan and getting continuous support for your particular business. So here's your homework and your exercises. First of all, I want you to take action. I gave you a lot of good advice today and I want you to take action so that you can create a success. You know, there's an old saying out there that nothing breeds success like success and that is very true. In some of my inspirational works, I call it the law of empowerment. And the law of empowerment says something like this. It says that anything that we can do to help us feel more powerful in one area of our life helps us feel more powerful in all areas of our life. So I want you to focus on creating a success today. 
For some of you, that success is going to be that somebody answered the phone. For other of you, it's that the success is going to be that I, I closed and I made an appointment. For some of you, it's going to be that I moved that conversation, that sales conversation, to the next step. And for some of you, that success is going to be I asked for the order and I got the order. It's really important that you focus on having a lot of successes in your life so that you can keep that positive attitude towards sales and so that you can move into that zone of enjoying the opportunity to sell every second of every day. If it's appropriate for you, review Office Hour 16 on making more money by managing your pipeline. I hope that you have a big pipeline out there and you're managing that pipeline successfully. If you could use a few tips on managing your pipeline to improve that aspect of your sales processes, then by all means, review Office Hour 16. I also want you to review the sales success principles in the Beyond Business Survival Program. I hope that you are all members of that program and have purchased that program because there are tons of valuable advice in that. And so I'll review the sales success principles in there. Again, I didn't repeat them when I made this conversation. I talked about some of the same things in different ways. And I want you to get a sales success coach for your support. And, and also, by the way, in between now and next week, I want you to take a few minutes and invite someone else to these calls. If these calls have been meaningful to you, if these calls have been helpful to you, then go on to Facebook or social media or pick up the phone or just in a conversation with somebody. Ask them to check out these calls. It's free. We have a free trial, you know, for a, for a month or so. So you're not asking them to spend a little money. You're asking them to check it out. And I have this belief. I have this understanding. I have this confidence that these calls are adding a lot of value to the CEOs out there. And, and I invite you to share that value with other people. In just a minute, we're going to have open questions and answers. Of course, we invite comments and questions on the topic of the day and then any other issues that you might want to have a conversation about. I invite you to tell me what your biggest takeaways are, either by typing into the control box here or by, or by uh, going to the Brilliant Business Group and letting people know what you gained for that conversation. And I'm going to invite you right now, if you can, to raise your hand. In your, we'll go to webinar control panel. I'm, and my coaches wanted me to do this during the conversation today, and I kind of forgot about it. But right now, if you got value from this conversation, I want you to go and click the little icon that it's at the bottom, it's underneath the arrow that you see there to the left of the control panel, or it's the only little strip that you see if you have moved that control panel to the right in some way. And just raise your hand if you got a lot of insights and value from today's presentation. And I want you to tell me what you're going to focus on, either, again, in the chat log that's associated with the Go to Webinar, or um, in the Brilliant Business Group if you're watching a recording or you want to get feedback from a lot of different folks. You know, I, I've been working a lot with my marketing team of both Stephanie and Marcel, who are on the call here in a little bit. Uh, or on the, have been on the call the entire time, and you're going to get a chance to perhaps talk to them in, here in a little bit. Um, we've been focusing on what makes me different from other business consultants and coaches out there and coming up with my distinctions. So number one distinction that I have is I don't want a lot of your money. I don't want you to spend a lot of money with me. I want you to spend an appropriate amount of money on education, on training, and consulting and coaching. You're never going to find me ask for $10,000 or $50,000 if it's not the right thing for you and your business because I want you to succeed in your business and I don't want you to write huge checks to me or, or ramp up a lot of expenses on your credit card if that's not the right thing for you. I just want you to get the support that you need, the support that you can use right now in your business based on your skill set and your stage in business and the support that you can afford. So that's, that's what I pride myself on doing, is offering a lot of, a lot of uh, products and services so that you can get the support that you need right now today, the support that you can use right now today, and the support that you can afford right now. Another thing that sets me apart from other folks is I don't believe that belief and persistent guarantee you success. I see that message a lot of people that say, if you just don't give up, you're going to succeed, and if you believe it, you can achieve it. If you dream it, you can do it. And that's not my experience because I see a lot of believers and dreamers out there who are not getting the success that they need. No, you actually need good plans. 
and you need to do the work. Nobody ever created a good business by sitting on the couch and believing in themselves. You have to get out and actually do the work. Um, and I also believe that persistence alone will not guarantee your success. That I've seen a lot of people persist in a way that was not successful for them, and in that persistence, they just struggled more and more and more over time. So it's not just about persisting. It's not just about doing stuff. It's about doing the right things in the right way. And many times that's about getting the education, the training, the coaching, and the consulting that you need to make sure that your efforts are not in vain. And for one other thing that sets me apart is I don't want you to jump into the deep end before you learn to swim. I don't think it's a good idea for many people to think about starting an enormous business or growing their, their business enormously. No, I want you to engage with the marketplace as quickly as you can. Uh, then I want you to have a relentless pursuit of financial stability. And then I want you to grow your business in a very measured and thoughtful way. I want you to learn to tread water before you jump into the deep end uh, because I don't want you to struggle so much. And it's not just about you. It's about your family. It's about your community. It's about the world for you to have success in selling. And as a result of these distinctions and my passion for helping people be more successful in their business, we offer a variety of support services. We offer education services, training, consulting, and coaching services. And the one I want to highlight right now today is the opportunity that you have to sign up for a free sales success coaching system. We're going to take a look at what you are doing and the roadblocks you have, the stucks that you're experiencing, and help you overcome them in the context of a single coaching session, which the value to you could be absolutely enormous. For some people, you make $5 every time you make a sale. And for some people, you make $5,000 every time they make a sale. So if you're stuck in some way, um, the value of this coaching service could be, could be enormous to you. And at the end of the strategy session, we'll invite you to participate in a 90-day coaching package that we're offering today for just under $1,500. If you would like to see, like to make that happen, if you would like to reach out and see what we can do to help you improve your sales results, then I invite you to send an email to Stephanie at PaulHoyt.com. As you've heard me say in the last several weeks, Stephanie May, who's on the call today and has been on the last several calls, has been joining my team as a senior consultant. As it turns out, Stephanie has had a tremendous amount of experience being a sales coach. So we're expanding the offerings that we have here at my company, at the Hoyt Management Group, through the talents that she has as a sales success coach. And I'm going to invite her to come off of mute for just a second and say hello to you if, you, if she would, and maybe talk just a minute about this program. Stephanie, are you there? I am. Hi, Paul. Hello, Hi. everybody. Hi. So talk to them just a little bit about what they can expect in this conversation with you and uh, perhaps a little bit later on in a sales coaching uh, package that you're offering. Oh, sure, sure. <clears throat> um, well, again, as Paul said, my name is Stephanie May. I um, have been in sales and marketing for a long time, and so for me, these three sessions are really they're a heck of a lot of fun. So what we're going to do is you give me a call, we're going to schedule some time, and then we're going to start chatting about what you're doing, what your business is, some kind of stucks that you're having, and then we're going to brainstorm and talk about some ways to get around them. Um, for example, one of, the, uh, one of my clients was having a hard time with getting the, his presentation together. He just wasn't getting the results he wanted with his presentation. So I worked with him on his closing and his presentation and really helped him get some, some really brand new strategies and some new results in place. So that's my goal. That's my goal. Um, in sales, it's all about getting some new results. So there Thank you, you go. See, Thank you. I appreciate that, Stephanie. So um, send Stephanie an email or give me a call and we'll hook you up. Uh, for many of you, improving your sales can mean many, many, many thousands of dollars a month. And I have firsthand experience with Stephanie as being a great sales coach, so I know that she'll help you improve your sales results. 
I also want to invite you to purchase my CEO training program at beyondbusinesssurvival.com. Go to that and take a look at the, uh, the, the information that we offer on that program there. It really is what you need to know when you're the CEO. I've, we've had everybody that goes and purchases this program loves the program. I get kudos on it all the time. I got one just last week from a gentleman who purchased the system who said it was the training that he, he never got in high school or college that he wished he'd had 20 or 30 years ago. And of course, like all of the products and services we offer, it comes with a money-back guarantee. So if for some reason you decided that it just wasn't your cup of tea, then just raise your hand and you can get your money back. So this is a no-risk opportunity for you to get the education and training that I know that you need in order to avoid making those $5,000 and $10,000 mistakes in your business. Our next Office Hours presentation will be next Monday, August the 11th, and I'm going to talk about the Blue Ocean Strategy and how to stand out from the crowd. I'm very excited about that one uh, because many of us are running our business in what they call a red ocean. It's called red ocean because there's a lot of blood in the water from the feeding frenzy of the sharks that you're being in competition with. And we're going to talk to you about the concepts and principles in the book, The Blue Ocean Strategy, and help you stand out from a crowd next week. In between now and then, go to, go to paulsurvey.com and let me know what topics that you'd like for me, for me to address on future Office Hours presentations, and do your homework. So we're going to jump into the questions and answers section of our call today. I invite you first to give me questions or comments on the topic of the day, and then any other issues that you would like to talk about, and my contact information is there on the screen. If any time, by the way, that you'd like to schedule a 15-minute call with me, or even a longer call than that. If you have some serious business you want to talk about, you can go to schedulepaul.com and find an opening on my calendar, and I'd be eager for the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Um, with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. Stephanie, do we have any questions on the call today? We do. Got a couple of comments as well. Okay. Chuck sent a couple of comments. Um, I, I really like this one. He says, tell your sons and daughters to get into a sales position very early, early in their career. The customer always challenges you to think on your feet. You will develop thick skin. You'll appreciate just how important it is when you become a, um, a GM or CEO, and you'll have the stamina to get by on four hours of sleep after entertaining the customer. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, that was great. That was a fantastic comment. I really do appreciate that especially the humor at the end of it. But no, I mean, I 100% agree. To have that sales experience early in your career is really helpful. Maybe it was the you know, door-to-door -door sales experience I had when I was in college, when I was young and immortal and in, unafraid of anything that, you know, helped me today be a better, better salesperson than I would have been otherwise. So thank you for that great advice, Chuck. Next, Stephanie. I agree. I agree. Getting those sales positions when you're young, um, you have a much thicker skin. You get used to the you get you, you get used to the no's that you get on your way to the yeses. Marilyn uh, sent a comment that she will focus on working on her pipeline. Marilyn, if you're still here, I'm going to unmute you. Marilyn, are you there? Hi. 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 I'm here. Hi. I just. I just wanted to ask you, you said that, that you're working on your pipeline. What does that mean for you? Well, I, I need to um, kind of um, put something in place so that I have constant customers to talk to, mm -hmm. clients to, to talk to, because I, I, it comes in droves. Like, you know, someone will refer a bunch of people to me, and I'll go through talking with them. And then there will be times where there's no one to talk to. So I want to have my pipeline so that I'll have a constant supply of clients to yeah. potential clients to have, talk with. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Sure. Do you have um, uh, Do you have any kind of database or or system that you're using to track your your conversations and your scheduling with with your prospects and and yes, potential I clients? Do. Yes, I do. I keep track with uh, with each conversation. That's how I know I have uh, such gaps <laughs> in, the, in the conversations. Okay. okay. Are you scheduling then your, your follow-ups? For example, okay, um, 
Susie tells me that, that, that she's too busy today, but call her in two weeks. So do you have something where two weeks pops up and you get a, a reminder on your calendar, call Susie because today's the day that I'm going to close her? Yes. Yes, I do do, you do that. that. Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay. All right. So, well, um, Stephanie, uh, you know, just if I as may, a, Stephanie, if sure. I may jump in here, um, I want to leave time for some other questions and comments too, but this is an excellent example of a conversation that you can have with Stephanie to see mm -hmm. what she can do to help. So, Marilyn, I invite you to, to send an email to Stephanie at paulhoyt.com or otherwise okay. contact me because this would be a great opportunity for the two of you to have a conversation about what you're doing in sales and how Stephanie might be able to uh, give you some advice that will help you get over some of those roadblocks you're experiencing. Thank you. So thank you very much, Marilyn, and thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Stephanie, do we have uh, other comments and questions for today? Yeah, we do. We do. What is the what's the biggest deal you have closed? <laughs> the biggest deal I closed was as a part of a sales team when I was working for Oracle Corporation. And for those of you who don't know who Oracle is, they're I think they're the second largest software company in the world. Um, and they also they recently bought Sun Microsystems a few years ago, so they also have their own hardware platforms too. Um, and I was working on the U.S. West account team before Quest bought them in a merger in 1997 or 96 or so. And we closed an enterprise deal that was worth close to $20 million. It was an enterprise license of Oracle application software and database software for the entire U.S. West enterprise. And it was close to a $20 million deal. By the way, we had like eight people on our sales team. And that deal took 18 months or so to close. So that was a perfect example of an extremely large deal with several salespeople, and I was a technical support rep on the team, and a few other sales support people as well, going after a major account over a prolonged period of time and getting the results that we wanted to get. So that $20 million deal was probably the biggest one that I was um, a part of. I also worked on about a two-person sales team that closed a $5 million opportunity just a few months after that when I went to work um, for um, a division. A co it was another division of Oracle, and we sold um, a company on an application hosting out of a million-dollar-a-year contract for five years. So I've had some experience with very large sales, uh, and I've also had experience with very small and very quick sales cycles too. But those are the biggest ones I've had experience with. Next question. Wow, awesome. Yep. Um, what types of products and services have you sold? You know, um, a lot. I think door-to-door -door sales. Well, first of all, my first job when I was 14 years old was selling, it was at a taco stand, something called Taco Tico, which is still alive in Wichita, Kansas, where I was born and raised. And, and I was working at Taco Tico, and so we sold tacos and burritos. And then we sold door-to-door. Uh, -door, I sold encyclopedias back in the days where we didn't have the Internet. And it was really a big deal for uh, a mother and father to invest $1,000 in their child's education by buying encyclopedia. I think it was the World Book Encyclopedia and maybe Encyclopedia Britannica as a set. I can't remember. Or it was Collier's. That's who I sold for. Collier's had an encyclopedia. And they also had a a child craft or some other version of that too. So we sold this encyclopedia package, then I sold a, a discount buying club door to door. Um, I've sold computer systems. Um, I suspect I've sold very large, everything but mainframe hardware. I sold mainframe software, mini computer hardware and software, PC hardware and software, other sorts of professional services, a tremendous amount of professional services. And of course, of course now for the last 13 years, I've been selling uh, consulting and coaching services and uh, my own information products to folks. So I've sold a variety of things, um, all kinds of software because I had a 30-year degree, 30-year career rather, in information products. So we sold everything related to information systems and computers during that period of time and a few other things along the side. So those are the things that I've had experience selling. Next question, Stephanie. I just hate to pick up the phone and call people. It never seems to work. What should I do? 
Well, there's probably a lot of things. That's a good opportunity for you, by the way, to call Stephanie and get a good conversation going with her. So off the top of my head, this is clearly an attitude issue. Um, if you hate to pick up the phone, it's it may be because you're you're reluctant to to face rejection because you're really not focusing on the value that you can bring to some people. And when you sell, it's not about closing every deal. It's about sharing the the value of the products and services that you have with other people so that they can make a decision as to whether or not that's exactly the right thing for them. Um, and your job is to sell is to share that enthusiastically and help them see the value for themselves. And that's what enjoying selling is all about. Um, my biggest encouragement for you is to have a success and to think about having those sales successes because with those successes comes a renewed sense of self-confidence and a re renewed sense of the value that you're bringing to other people. It could also be the script that you don't have confidence in and exactly what you're saying and how you're saying it. But to me, success in sales is about 80% dependent upon your attitude about you having that joyful warrior, I'm having a gift for you kind of attitude about that conversation. And that's about 80% of it and 20% is about what you say. So it's how you say it and the mindset and attitude that you have as being 80% of your success and 20% the actual words that you have to say. Stephanie may not agree with that, but, but, uh, but I, I'm sure that she'll agree with that in principle. So. Um, if you're having, if you're not having the success, it's all about attitude and about knowing what you're doing. Get yourself a sales success coach. Have a conversation with Stephanie and see if she can't help you out. Next, Stephanie. Who's your favorite trainer? Who's your favorite sales trainer? I've had a lot of favorite sales trainers over the years. When I my some of my first professional sales training was with strategic selling. Strategic selling is a sales system that is for large account sales when you have sales teams and you're selling to committees and I really enjoyed strategic selling because it was the first sales training system that I, we talked about they talked about asking great questions they talked about identifying you know members of the of the purchasing committee and the role that you had with them and the relationship that you had with them and it was a lot of great advice for complex sales cycles uh, I really liked reverse selling as well, that essentially you were telling people to say, hey, you know, it may not be a good idea for you to do business with me at all, and I don't want you to do business with me if it's not going to be a good idea for you. So let me ask you a couple of questions and see whether or not it's worth your time and worth my time for us to continue in the conversation. You know, you were essentially doing the takeaway from the very beginning, telling somebody, from the very start that this this might not be of value to you but but let's just see let's just are you willing to ask answer a couple of questions and see whether or not it is that was a very interesting approach and lately it's uh, I've been studying Eric Lofholm's protege system for the last couple of years I've been listening to Eric and going through all of his material and I really do like that especially if you're not selling to a group environment, if it's a simple sales call or simple sales cycle that you have, either a one or a two or a three call close, and you're not selling to a committee, um, then I think it can be extremely valuable for you. She has lots of different programs. And if you go to my website at paulhoyt.com forward slash recommendations, you'll see the recommendations tab there. Click on the link and you can get some free stuff that Eric gives you to get familiar with who he is and the, and the programs he has. So those have been my, I think, my favorite ones over the years, strategic selling, reverse selling, and now currently Eric Lofholm's protege system. Uh, any other questions, Stephanie? Who's your sales success coach? I'll, right now it's Stephanie. So <laughs> one of the things that I realized when she, she came on and said, hey, I want to work with you, Paul, a, a couple of months ago, was the, of her tremendous experience in, in being a sales success coach for uh, several people, including Eric Lawful. She's worked for Eric directly or on a contract basis to be one of his sales success coaches. So all three of us here on the uh, Paul Hoyt team, Marcel, who is my social media consultant, and Stephanie, who is a senior consultant with me, and my sales success coach. We all have a lot of experience with Eric's systems and can help you implement his systems into your business for your own sales success. 
So I'm eager. I give per full permission for Stephanie to kick my butt. You know, and, and if I'm not doing what I need to do with the right attitude and with the right activity, she's got my permission to call me on my stuff and say, Paul, you know, meet your commitment. Step up and be the person that you know that you can be. And she can be my great sales success coach and she can be your sales success coach too. And I have 12.59, so I think we got time for one more question if we have one, Stephanie. How much does sales success coaching cost? Well, we just kind of gave the offer uh, of the sales success package for $1,500. But I would encourage you to think about not so much about how much it costs, but for the value that it can bring to you. For some people, every deal that they close brings them $10. For other people, every deal that they close brings them $100. For other people, every deal that they close brings them $1,000 or even $5,000. And for everybody who is a business owner, your success of your business depends on your success in selling. If you're not successful in selling, your business will not succeed. Your business will not survive. So I encourage you to think about the value in having your business continue because that's what we're really talking about is whether or not your business survives and whether or not you, you continue to struggle day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. The surest way for you to stop struggling in your business and to experience the abundance and the prosperity and the joyfulness in life is to be successful in sales. So I think that is a great closing uh, question and a great closing comment there. If you know me at all, you know that, that I want you to have an abundant and joyful life and I want you to be successful in sales and successful in your business. So invite other people to this call. Avail yourself of the opportunities to listen to our free stuff and to purchase the fine programs and services that we have so that you can get the success that you need and the success that you deserve in your business. Until we meet the next time, this is Paul Hoyt wishing you a most marvelous and prosperous day. Thanks. Bye-bye.